switch on your uh, video. Dr. Sangeeta. ऑडियो नहीं आ रहा मुझे कुछ सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है Yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, all. I think I am audible and also visible to all of you. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. You are yes. audible. Okay. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, Dr. Sangeeta Rajput, our CMO, CC and TPC, Dr. Shruti Bhatia, Senior Consultant, Gyne Gyne Oncology, Action Cancer Hospital, Pashim Bihar, and our Mr. De, Marketing Executive of Action Cancer Hospital. All my uh, colleagues of NTPC, doctors, Dr. Ananda from PMI. and today is a, a special day for all of us because we are uh, uh, celebrating the world cancer day to do something for cancer patients and uh, be it uh, their uh, awareness uh, treatment early detection prevention so everything that comes in a cancer patient's life that that we are going to deal with today and hopefully coming week we'll be taking up webinars for the awareness of general public at large but the, today and tomorrow we have dedicated for the awareness of all our doctors of ntpc and uh, today we will be uh, listening to dr shruti bhatia who is the uh, senior consultant gyne oncology from answer cancer hospital hospital sorry and uh, she has been in the field for last 15 years more than 15 years 
and has the uh, operations related to gynec uh, cancer and she has been also uh, um, a, a front runner in uh, treating all gynec thanks dr behra uh, good evening all good evening dr shruti uh, today um fourth of february and today is the world cancer day uh, it is a global healthcare event for the awareness of cancer uh, which aim to start, uh, for spreading awareness and educating people and it is a uh, for early detection prevention and treatment a cancer is a global problem and the incidence is rising every year uh, it is our duty to create awareness among doctors health care and sorry and stuff our doctors on the most for the most common uh, causes in gynec diseases and i will uh, thank you to our, our ntpc doctors who are here in this uh, meeting and and they would and i urge them uh, to uh, them to spread awareness both in the society and in the patient and and educate the females also uh, be, uh, because the females uh, they are hesitant for early detection for checking and this uh, i will not take much time and so prevention is better then you uh, hand over to dr shruti thank you ma'am thank you thank you for the nice presentation and uh first and foremost as you all have said ki why are we celebrating the world cancer day today it's more not to celebrate cancer but actually to defeat cancer Uh, and once we know about cancer we can defeat cancer so uh, not only we salute our cancer survivors but we should also take steps even though baby steps but we should take some steps so that we can prevent ourselves and people around us from this horrible sea or horrible cancer as we all say so today i'll uh, speak to you something about gynecological cancers uh in the world entire world if you see i mean uh, amongst female breast cancer is coming out to be most common but in india still especially in rural areas we see cervix cancer or cervical cancer to be most common followed by breast cancer which is more common in metropolitan cities and uterus and ovarian cancer which are next in line so just a brief summarize what all cancers we are dealing with the cancer of the cervix which is the mouth of the uterus as we can say cancer of the uterine body then cancer of the ovary which is again a very bad cancer then cancer of vagina and vulva are less common and still less commoner is the gestational trophoblastic tumors or chorio carcinomas as we see them of all the cancers as i told you cervix cancer is most popular most common and most prevalent amongst indian females in fact india is a team leader in incidence of cervical cancer and one women in every 7 minute dies of cervix cancer so that's how the great proportion of the problem is and the sorry state of affair is affairs is this is one cancer which we can prevent and stop if we treat in the right time it's a most common cancer in females 1.2 lakh new cases are diagnosed approximately every year and approximately 68000 women die every year in india what is the cause of cancer of all the cancers this is one cancer which we know it is caused by one infection called human papilloma virus there are so many uh, in cancers in our body both solid and liquid cancers but for many cancers we cannot pinpoint to one cause but the good point of cervix cancer is we can pinpoint the cause and that is one infection which is human papilloma virus infection this infection is mostly sexually transmitted but it has been seen to be transmitted less common in perinatal from mother to child and rarely by fomites then there are other co factors which work along with the hpv infection which is immunosuppression we have seen hiv positive patients and patients who have to take steroids for a long duration of time they have had more hpv infections as compared to other general population then secondly smoking 
smoking is one thing which is common to all the cancers in our body whatever cancer we think and we talk about you will see among this causative factor smoking is one common factor because there are so many harmful carcinogenic agents in smoking which cause uh, changes in the cellular level in our body and these help other agents to cause cancer similarly in human in females if there is hpv infection is present and the patient is either immunocompromised or has a history of prolonged smoking she has a higher chance to develop cervical cancer similarly uh, reasons like early marriage when a, a person has multiple sexual partners or there is a strong history of sexually transmitted infection in the uh, person herself or in her in her partner there is a higher chance of getting a hpv virus infection now as we all know about hpv it is had a, it is both a low risk virus and a high risk virus so the more common is the high risk virus which is causing the cervical cancer so a patient who is sexually active with us and has multiple sexual partners or has a history of sexually transmitted infection has a higher chance to get higher high risk hpv infection and a higher chance to get cervical cancer as i told you hpv infection is the main reason behind cancer formation now mind you all hpv infections do not lead to cancer but it can lead to a pre malignant condition called cin so when a normal cervical epithelium gets exposed to hpv infection it slowly gradually develops a low grade cin or a low grade pre cancer condition which may progress to high grade and which may progress to cancer so in a total span we have 8 to 10 years of our time where we can attack this infection any time stop the infection from progressing to higher disease and then treat the patient totally so of all the infections in our body in this infection we get a long time to prevent and stop cancer formation now coming to what are the symptoms of cervical cancer most of the times patient will not have any symptoms especially in a pre malignant state patients do not will uh, present with any symptoms and this uh, condition is detected during routine screening sorry but if the disease is prolonged enough it has she has a, a pre cancer developing into cancer patient often present with excessive vaginal discharge which is not cured by normal course of antibiotics she can have abnormal vaginal bleeding which can present as post coital intermenstrual or a post menopausal bleeding in conditions where the tumor is such a large size that it goes and involve uh, uh, other nearby organs patient can present with pain or urinary and bowel symptoms many times the cervix cancer goes and erodes into the urinary bladder and we patients develop and present with hematuria or problem in the stools now how do we detect a cervical cancer or a pre malignant condition as i told you this is one cancer where we can pinpoint the cause it is a hpv infection which goes uh, infects the cervical epithelium and gradually develops into pre cancer and then cancer so many tests are available with us where we can detect the presence of hpv infection or the presence of pre malignant changes in the cervix we have a simple test called a pap smear or a liquid based cytology we have a hpv testing where we take a sample from the mouth of the cervix we take a brush and take a scraping from the area send it to the lab and then test it if there is presence of any infection or a pre malignant condition then if any of these tests are abnormal we would go ahead and do a colposcopy directed biopsy followed by imaging if we uh, find out any abnormality imaging can be an ultrasound an mri or a ct scan whenever the disease is advanced we may require the use of pet ct or a cystoscopy testing as i told you a pap smear is a or a liquid based cytology is a simple test where we have a brush and a spatula where we take a scrapings from the mouth of the cervix and then send it to the lab within 2 days it can tell us if there is presence of any pre malignant changes in the cervix or if there is just a normal cervical epithelium hpv test again is a very simple test by using a brush and just like a pap smear we take a brushings from the local area and we can test it by various methods and know the presence of hpv infection on the cervix if infection is present or if the pap smear shows us any abnormality we can do a colposcopy by a colposcopy we identify the most abnormal area on the cervix and appropriate biopsy can be taken from the area and we know what type of disease is present there 
if it's a local condition like any pre malignant condition then we do some local treatments most common of which is a cryotherapy cryotherapy is one uh, procedure where we can freeze the mouth of the cervix using a cryo probe the cervical epithelium gets destroyed by a freezing and then when the new epithelium comes it is devoid of any problem it is successful in pre malignant conditions cryotherapy is successful in more than 80% of the cases but sometimes the lesion is large or the lesion or the problem comes back again in these cases we need to do a cone biopsy cone biopsy is also a method where we take the remove a part of the cervix with the help of a cone loops are available of a various sizes we remove part of the cervix it's a uh, simple outpatient procedure we can do it in the opd the part of the cervix is removed uh, like in a cone shaped manner we remove it in a cone shaped manner and send it for a histopathology the histopathology guides us if it's a malignant condition or or a pre malignant in pre malignant conditions normally this treatment suffice we just keep these patients under follow up but sometimes if we find a high grade lesion or a uh, presence of cancer then in these cases we need to go ahead and do a radical procedures now coming to the uh, stages of cervical cancer as in all the cancers we have four stages stage 1 is where the disease is confined to the cervix and it does not spread to nearby organs in stage 2 the cervical lesion goes and involves a cervical stroma in a deep way in stage 3 the disease goes out of the uterus in the parametrium and it may involve up to the lateral pelvic wall sorry and in stage 4 the lesion goes and infiltrates the urinary bladder or the rectum posteriorly or in certain cases it may go and metastasize to other organs like lymph nodes liver and lungs uh, as i told you because in the uh, the treatment is divided on the type of the stage of the disease in early stages when the lesion is confined to the cervix we can do a colonization as i showed you before or tracheotomy tracheotomy is a procedure where we remove part of the cervix now these two procedures are done in young females who desire fertility preservation females who have not had children and develop cervical cancer or a high grade pre cervical uh, pre malignant condition of cervix in those cases we remove part of the cervix and then keep her under follow up but in females who have completed their family we do a radical hysterectomy in which uterus and the cervix and the part of the parametrium is removed along with the pelvic lymph nodes and sent for histopathology in advanced cases where the disease has infiltrated into the bladder or the rectum a exenteration procedure is done where we remove the uterus along with that part of a bladder or a complete bladder and similarly in a posterior exenteration we remove part of the rectum along with the uterus in uh, cases where the stage is 2b and beyond where the disease has spread to area around the uterus in those cases we uh, patient has to go for a radiation therapy radiation therapy is done along with the chemotherapy now again radiation therapy can be of various types now this we have a image guided radiation therapy or modular radiation therapy by these treatments we basically radiate the entire uterus cervix and the entire pelvis and the cancer cells are killed with the help of a radiation beam technology chemotherapy helps us in increasing it boosts the effect of radiation therapy so we give uh, 28 approximately 28 fractions of radiation therapy are given over a period of 6 to 8 weeks combined with chemotherapy secondly radiation therapy is also given vaginally as a boost to the local area in certain cases when the disease is actually metastasized to lungs liver or a stage 4b disease where we cannot do anything in those cases palliative chemotherapy is given just to relieve her symptoms as i told you of all the cancers in one uh, in our body this is one cancer which we know the cause and we can prevent it so first and foremost is the lifestyle we have a good nutrition we don't smoke all these things help in preventing cancer formation then as i said presence of multiple sexual partners or std infections promote cancer formation so if we can avoid that again we can prevent a cancer secondly we have a long and treatable pre cancer stage as i told you before from a normal cervix to a cancer formation we have approximately 8 to 10 years where we can act and we can uh, detect the problem and uh, treat it at the same time so that the cancer formation does not takes place 
Secondly, we have a very good screening methods. So many cancers again in our body, which do not, we cannot screen them. We do not know until they develop in advanced stage. But cervix cancer is one where we have so many good screening tools, liquid-based cytology and pap smear or HPV testing. All these tests are simple tests, easily available, can be done even in a primary health center, in a small clinics, in uh, all dispensaries. And we can detect the presence of infection or the presence of a pre-malignant condition and treat it by simple procedures so that we can prevent cancer formation. And lastly, but the most important thing is the vaccine. As we have a HPV infection is there, we can prevent HPV infection forming a cancer in our body with the help of these vaccines. Uh, you all would have heard about, there was a lot of news in media, uh, media uh, about the Serum Institute vaccine, which is coming up against HPV virus. So far, we have in our country, three types of vaccines are available. The most commonly available is the Gardasil, which is a quadrivalent vaccine. In girls less than 14 years of age, two doses are required. In girls more than 15 years of age, three doses over six months are required. We start vaccinating these girls from nine years of age, ideally to be done up to 30 years of age, but we can do up to 40, 45 years of age. These are prophylactic vaccines. So we have to give the vaccine before the sexual activity starts so that we can prevent HPV infection. But if the girl or the female has presented to us later on, she can still have the vaccine, but vaccination or not, the screening has to be done and she has to uh, uh, screen, get herself screened later in her life. Similarly, a Gardasil 9 vaccine is available and the Servavac is the Indian vaccine which is coming up soon and will be easily available in the market soon and all of us can take the advantage of that. So to summarize, cervical cancer is one thing which we can detect and treat easily if we take adequate steps at the right time. Coming to the next cancer, which is the endometrial cancer or the cancer of the body of the uterus. It mostly commonly arises from the endometrium surface. Uh, now we have seen because of the changing lifestyle, the incidence is increasing in India and more in metropolitan cities. Uh, the best part of this cancer is, I always say to my patients, patients develop symptoms very early in the, uh, if there is a uh, cancer formation, the symptoms present themselves very early. She'll have irregular or heavy vaginal bleeding, heavy cycles or cycles will come very often or females will present with postmenopausal bleeding. Some cases the uterine sizes increase so much that she can have pain abdomen or vaginal discharge or severe abdominal distension if the disease has advanced and spread to other Y organs. As I told you, this is because of the changing lifestyle and in uh, different, uh, in the, in, uh, because of the change in our habitat that we are having increasing endometrial cancer. Why is it so? Endometrial cancer is one which is more common seen in obese females, females who have hypertension, who have diabetes. There is a lot of fat content. Whenever there is a lot of fat content in our body, some of the hormonal changes take place so that they predispose to cancer formation. Similarly, girls who have hormonal imbalance early in their life like PCOD or females who take hormone replacement therapy after menopause for a long time or ladies who have late menopause or those who have used tamoxifen for breast cancer. All these females have certain hormonal changes in the body which predispose females to endometrial cancer formation. Another important and very important reason, genetics. If you have any uh, family history of cancer, like a breast cancer or a uterus or a ovary cancer, these females are more prone to get uterine cancer in their life. Now, how do we diagnose this? As I told you, first and foremost, this is one cancer which has symptoms very early. So a postmenopausal lady who has ever had any abnormal bleeding after her menopause should get herself uh, investigated. It could be because of endometrial cancer. Simple local examination and an ultrasound test will tell us so many times if there is any abnormality. Normally in a postmenopausal lady, endometrial thickness is less than 5 millimeter, but any endometrial thickness more than 5 millimeter in postmenopausal lady should alert us and we should look for any abnormality in the uterus for which a hysteroscopy or a guided biopsy is done where we take a sample from the uterine cavity and send it for the lab and we know the answer if it is because of any abnormal, uh, any malignancy is present. 
with the help of hysteroscopy we visual, uh, visualize the endometrial cavity and sometimes there are polyps are present and we can detect and remove these polyps if we find out any malignancy is there we can do further testing like a mri or a ct scan and in advanced cases a pet ct may be done in a uterine cancer uh, the early stage is there which involves the endometrial cavity in stage 2 the growth goes and involves in the cervical body stage 3 the uh, the growth spreads outside the uterus in the nearby lymph nodes or in the ovaries and stage 4 the disease may involve bladder liver lungs or uh, other essential organs now uh, this is one cancer which listens very nicely to the treatment if you give the treatment at the right time and the disease is detected in early stage in all stages of endometrial cancer ideal treatment and the first and foremost tre treatment is hysterectomy where we remove the uterus tubes ovaries and if the disease is one b or beyond uh, we do pelvic and parietal lymphadenectomy the entire thing is again sent for histopathology which guides us the further treatment further treatment could be a radiation therapy and if the nodes or other essential organs are involved we may need to give her a chemotherapy also in certain cases where patient is unfit to undergo any surgery we may require to give her a radiation therapy as the primary treatment but majority of the cases we first fall do a surgery followed by adjuvant radiation or chemotherapy now we have seen uh, we are seeing more and more day by day the females are delaying child bearing to a later stage because of a profession or delayed marriages and the, uh, there is increasing trend of obesity and diabetes in females plus pcod you all would have heard about all these uh, reasons are uh, leading to delayed fertility delayed marriages and delayed child bearing and we are seeing more commonly endometrial cancer in younger age normally this disease is more common in a post menopausal lady or ar around the age of 55 60 years but with the uh, trend of late child bearing and the change in lifestyle is leading to endometrial cancers in younger age group so we have in these cases we have to target our treatment and tailor the treatment according to the uh, desire female desire so in these cases instead of doing a surgery we switch for oral hormonal therapy like a magistrol or medroxyprogesterone or in certain cases we may look, insert a merina what we call a steroid uh, levonorgestrel uh, releasing iucd coming to another more important and more serious cancer which is a ovarian cancer of all the female pelvic cancer ovarian cancer is responsible for maximum causes of death the incidence is increasing again exactly cause we do not know and majority of these cases do not present with any symptoms until unless the disease is advanced enough in early stages it's a stage 1 cancer patient will not have any symptoms but if the tumor is large or there is ascites or any other uh, involvement of other organs she may present with pain abdomen distension abnormal bleeding and pressure symptoms to urinary bladder and the rectum uh, the problem hello हॉर्मोनल थे those are the nally paris females or if the first child is after 35 years of age and for and more importantly and more increasing incidence is being seen in patients who have a genetic mutations like presence of brca1 or brca2 genetic mutation you all would have heard about angelina jolie uh, angelina jolie got herself tested she had a very strong family history of cancers her mother her grandmother they all had uterus and breast cancers so the present uh, she detected presence of a braca abnormality in her genetics and she went ahead and got herself a prophylactic surgery done because she realized that she has a, such a high in the high probability of getting a you ovarian cancer so presence of abnormal genes in our body also leads us expose uh, makes uh, the incidence of uh, ovarian cancer high in us 
there are certain protective factors also like use of oral contraceptive pills breastfeeding and if the first pregnancy in less than 25 years of age it has been seen they have somehow protect from ovarian cancer now as i told you in most of early stages we do not have any abnormal signs so patients do not present in early stage but uh, if they present in advanced stage or those ladies who have uh, regular ultrasound as part of the routine screening or routine annual health checkup plans in their families uh, a simple ultrasound is a very good test to detect the presence of any mass in the ovary and the uh, you can see a simple mass uh, sorry a solid cystic mass in the ovary or the presence of ascites or any abnormal uh, complex ovarian cyst can give us an indication that there could be ovarian cancer then we go ahead and do a tumor markers of which ca125 is most common but in younger females other tumor markers like alpha fetoprotein beta hcg and ldh and others are also done and if we suspect the lesion the complex ovarian mass is because of any it looks like a malignant mass then we go ahead and can do a ct scan or an mri in cases where the disease is advanced where you are suspecting an upper abdomen or a disease in the lungs then a pet ct is a very good modality in cases where we want to go ahead and do a primary surgery we can do otherwise if we sometimes want to confirm the diagnosis we can do a biopsy from the omental or any other metastatic deposit uh in as uh, in all uh, cancers a uh, majority of uh, ovarian cancer if detected early uh, as a present with ovarian mass majority of them are unilateral but sometimes they can be bilateral in stage 2 the mass has gone and uh, spreads in the nearby organs stage 3 the nearby organs pelvic lymph nodes or upper abdomen is involved in stage 4 we get a disease on omentum on the pelvic side walls and lymph nodes or lungs and liver uh now depending on the stage the treatment is uh, tailored accordingly in early stages surgery is the best option and it gives us the best results where we do a laparotomy to remove of the ovarian mass if the malignancy is not confirmed then we confirm it by a frozen section by frozen section we send the ovarian mass to the lab and the lab people uh, do a uh, freeze a part of the tissue and they tell us within 20 30 minutes the mass is a malignant or a benign or a borderline ovarian tumor if it is a malignant we proceed for complete staging where we remove the uterus tubes ovaries along with omentum the nearby pelvic lymph nodes and any abnormal areas are removed this all is again test for further histopathology and depending on the histopathology and stage of the disease patient is referred for further chemotherapy which again can be given either intravenous or intraperitoneal like a uh, hypex is you would have heard about in advanced cases where the patient has presented with lot of ascites in those cases uh, sorry in those cases we start the treatment with chemotherapy where we do a biopsy confirm the presence of malignancy and then start the treatment with chemotherapy normally uh, the plan is we give three cycles of chemotherapy followed by surgery for followed by further chemotherapy now uh, it is a very uh, as i told you um, it's a very disease which normally presents in a later stage so what can we do to detect ovarian cancer in early stage or what can we do to prevent ourselves as i told you there are certain high risk group females who have a family history of a breast ovarian endometrium or a colon or a prostate cancer in a family or females who know they have a braca1 or braca2 um, uh, genetic mutations all these females should go and do a normal screening you are for them in females normally what we recommend is depending upon the age when the uh, patient in the family was diagnosed the girls should start screening themselves once every year by a simple test called ultrasound of the abdomen now ultrasound is a very safe modality by which we can detect the presence of ovarian masses and these masses can be then uh, managed accordingly in uh, females who have a very high family history and a patient has completed her family in those cases we also advocate risk reducing salpingoforectomy or risk reducing surgery where both the tubes and ovaries are removed so that we can prevent cancer formation but this is recommend only for those female who have genetic mutations for ovarian cancer now coming to the less common cancer which is the vulvar cancer so normally these patients are old patients who present with persistent vaginal itching and persistent itching of the vulva 
in advanced cases they can present with a growth on the vulva or urinary and bowel symptoms and when we use examine them you will see a presence of a growth in the vulval area we do a biopsy and if the biopsy shows us any malignant uh, malignancy we do a mri and a pet ct of the area the most common treatment for the vulval cancers is radio surgery where we remove part of the vulva and the nearby lymph nodes and send it for uh, histopathology in advanced cases where the lesion involves urethra or the essential organs like bladder in those cases radiation therapy and chemotherapy is given uh now to summarize a uh, follow up management is required for all the cancers not only gynecological cancers but even other cancers are uh, do require a follow up treatment the problem is even in the early stage there is a chance of a recurrence the recurrence may be 2% or a 5% but all cancers may recur hence a regular follow up is required so for after the treat treatment is over like a surgery or a radiation or chemo at the end of the after the treatment is over we ask the patient to come for follow up every 3 months for 2 years then every 6 months for next 3 years and then annually for 5 years after 5 years and the annual checkups or these uh, monthly checkups would require a local examination an ultrasound or tumor markers in cases of ovarian cancer for cervical cancer we may need to repeat a pap smear for the females uh how to prevent cancers i mean we all are worried i mean itna kuch jaan liya cancer ke bare mein but how do we prevent cancer so uh again this is not a very easy answer for so many cancers because we do not know the reason we cannot prevent ourselves but there are certain things which we can do so that we uh, keep ourselves away from the harm and one of the most important things which we can do is maintain a good healthy lifestyle proper food which food means not eating more of a junk food home cooked proper food less sugars less fatty food and uh, proper meals and we should not be skipping meals if you are working there for entire day and just taking one meal in the entire day again it is not a good thing then a good exercise to maintain appropriate body weight as i told you not only for endometrial cancer and ovarian cancer for so many other cancers in our body obesity is one thing which is a very detrimental thing for our body and obese people tend to have more cancers not only cancers the treatment can also be compromised because of the presence of obesity so we have to maintain a good healthy lifestyle exercise more avoid smoking and alcohol like obesity smoking and alcohol are again agents which promote cancer formation in our body smoking is actually one thing which is uh, related to all the cancers maybe a cancer of the food pipe cancer of the stomach cancer of lungs cervix uh, you name it, urinary bladder smoking is responsible or related to any cancer every cancer in our body similarly diabetes again abnormal blood sugars agar more predispose us to obesity predispose us to cancers so anybody who has diabetes should be very careful keep their diabetes under check and a regular health examination or regular health checkup is again a very important part of staying healthy like we celebrate our birthdays every year i think we all should have a regular health checkup every year so that we can detect any abnormality in the early stage and get ourselves treated so that we our results are good in stage 1 of every cancer secondly and important and foremost is the vaccination as i told you of all the cancers in our body cervix cancer is one thing which we can prevent by a simple vaccination all girl, young girls should get themselves vaccinated and all elderly girls uh, females should go for regular screening which includes a pap smear cytology and for breast cancer they can go for mammography so by these few simple steps we can prevent ourselves from cancer formation and stay healthy thank you thank you dr shruti for uh, an elaborate uh, talk on the topic of uh, gynecological cancers thank you sir uh, and it was really uh, uh, revisiting the again the cancers of uh, uh, women uh after so many years uh, being in uh, medicine specialty i also found it interesting and the good points that i could get from your talk is that uh, i think cervical cancer is um, preventable almost 90% above it is uh, preventable Absolutely. and uh, and also with lifestyle changes most of other cancers 
can be preventable and also uh, early detection plays an important part in uh, treatment of all the cancers, be it uh, gynecological or otherwise. So uh, thank you so much and I would request our participants, uh, they are uh, both in the MS teams as well as in YouTube. So I think YouTube participants, they may not uh, be able to ask questions, but I request those who are on MS teams May please raise your hands, unmute yourself, and ask questions to Dr. Shruti. Okay, before anyone raises his hand, my question is, uh, uh, for prevention of cervical cancer, uh, WHO, I think, has recommended for vaccinating the boys, the uh, the men also for prevention of cervical cancer, but I didn't think I did. I don't think you touched upon that uh, during your talk, sir. Uh, actually, the guideline for cervical cancer prevention does include uh, vaccination, but so far in India we are not vaccinating boys currently. Okay. So currently, uh, WHO has actually given a for uh, shout for uh, eradication of cervical cancer by 2030. So, for their, uh, they've in fact advocated vaccinating females, good screening at least twice in a lifetime, and the proper treatment of pre malignant cases. So, but so far in India, because maybe the vaccine is not that commonly available, the government of India is planning to vaccinate girls currently. We can do on our basis, on a personal basis, but the guidelines in uh, India do not, are not uh, for boys. In fact, Australia and other countries are vaccinating boys currently, but not in India. Okay, then uh, second point uh, regarding cervical uh, cancer prevention is that uh, even you find that the uh, um, women is already infected with uh, the virus, mm -hmm. is it prudent to vaccinate or what is the maximum age limit of uh, vaccination for uh, prevention of cervical cancer? Actually, sir, the companies advocate up to the age of 45 years, but the best is to vaccinate because it's a preventive vaccine, prophylactic vaccine, not a therapeutic vaccine. So the best time to give vaccine is to the girls before the sexual activity starts, HPV being a sexually transmitted virus. So we want uh, to vaccinate the girls before the uh, beginning of sexual activity, but uh, girls who have missed or the females who are married now and had missed vaccination initially, can vaccinate themselves later. We are we can give to the uh, give up to the age of 35, 40 years, no problem. But we have to tell them that even if you are vaccinated, you have to get yourself screened. They should not think otherwise that I get a I've got a vaccination now. I don't need any screening. So that thing should not be there. They should understand even if vaccination is they they have been vaccinated, still a screening test is required for them. So for females who are married. For them, a good screening is actually more important. And for younger girls, vaccination has a very good role. Thank you so much. And uh, one more thing regarding the vaccination and the vaccines available. Uh, you said that you have two forms of Gardasil and one yeah. Indian vaccine. Can you just elaborate the differences between these uh, Indian vaccine and the Gardasil? Because many, I think the news channels are full of articles on uh, yeah. many uh, unknown fact that uh, ponder us uh, why Indian, why uh, not uh, Gardasil? Uh, sir, all these are uh, totally uh, extensively tested vaccines. So yes, Gardasil is basically in two forms. We get Gardasil and Gardasil 9. Gardasil is actually against four viruses. Gardasil 9 is against uh, nine uh, subtypes of HPV, but they both are very effective. The difference is as because of the number of viruses, then uh, the difference in the cost is there. The Indian vaccine is also a quadrivalent vaccine. It is also equally effective. The difference will be cost because it's an Indian made vaccine. So it is essentially it's going to be very uh, less costly as compared to Gardasil. Uh, good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Sushmita. Yeah, I'm NDPC Kehelgaon. Actually, I wanted to know that uh, these days we get we get many females, obese females of high socioeconomic group, above 50 years of age. They, they are still having their periods, regular periods. And uh, how frequently should we follow these uh, people? Because they are not ready for hysterectomy. They are not ready for uh, hysteroscopy. And uh, 
um, if the endometrium is thick, more than seven, uh, eight millimeters, what should we do? And is there any role of uh, uh, these uh, mm, modulators like uh, Sevista or... Uh, uh, actually, yeah, normally menstruation, normally in India, we are having menopause around 15 to 30 days. Yeah. years of age. So beyond 55 years of age, if a female is continuing to having menstrual cycle, then it is abnormal. Even in younger age group, if she had been had amenorrhea for one year and then she starts having periods again, again that is significant. So uh, eight millimeter thickness in a postmenopausal lady uh, with postmenopausal bleeding is significant. Asymptomatic no, lady, sorry, they are not postmenopausal, madam. They are they are having regular okay. periods. Above okay, 50, uh, with regular periods, obese, diabetes, hypertension, not ready for hysterectomy. Actually, uh, that is not, I would say if there are, uh, they have a strong family history of the malignancy, any malignancy in the family, then we should advocate uh, a simple ultrasound will guide us if the type of the endometrium is homogeneous or a heterogeneous. Because you will see majority of these endometrial cancer will develop certain abnormalities in ultrasound like a cystic changes or a heterogeneous eco texture is seen in endometrium. So uh, we should guide these females that they can go ahead and do a di uh, just even if not a hysteroscopy biopsy, at least endometrial sampling may be done. Otherwise, we can follow these females by a regular transvaginal ultrasound. A TVS is a very good modality to see the nature of the endometrium. A normal menstruating female with no abnormality, we can follow them, as I said, up to 40, 55. And again, uh, fam now we have seen because obese females are hyperestrogenic, they tend to have a late menopause. So we can follow them up with a simple TVS, which will tell us the is the endometrium homogeneous, heterogeneous, any abnormal cystic uh, hyperplasia is happening in the endometrium, then definitely they would need a biopsy. Otherwise, we at this age, I think we should not start any hormones without a biopsy. And if they do not want to expect me, we can do a marina insertion like levonorgestrel IUCD. At the time of biopsy, you can insert a marina that itself is a very good agent to prevent abnormal bleeding and even cancer formation. Uh, Madam, can marina be inserted after 50 years of age? Yes, yes, no issues. Age is not the criteria. Okay, yeah. okay, okay ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, one more question, madam. Is there, yeah, uh, should be, uh, these days we get with ovarian cysts in young age, below 20 years of age. How should we follow these patients? Complex cysts, normal cysts? Yeah, I think uh, ultrasound is a very good modality. By ultrasound, actually the radiologist can tell us if the cyst is going towards a complex cyst or a simple cyst, if there are any abnormal septations, any any other abnormal areas in the cyst, it's a multi-loculated and if it's a complex cyst, sometimes we, there is a hemorrhagic cyst. So, uh, a radiologist can actually help us in identifying the type of the cyst. If there is any doubt, we can go ahead and do an MRI. MRI again helps in differentiating between a hemorrhagic cyst or a malignant state cyst. And if still some suspicion is there, we can go ahead and do tumor markers. But if it's a simple cyst and it's a less than 8 centimeter, I think we can follow it up. Majority of them uh, subside as long as it's a simple cyst. But if it's a dermoid cyst or any other hemorrhagic or any other cyst, then we may require to give her some treatment. Thank you, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for um, giving us uh, your precious time and uh, educating us about the cancer in women. And uh, now we have another talk by Dr. Rashmi Shukla. So thank you so much. And thank we'll be looking forward for awareness programs like this to our employees and their beneficiaries. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you.
I request Dr. Rashmi to please join, uh, switch on the video. I think this uh, these sessions on cancer prevention treatment modalities will be also open tomorrow from four to six. We have two eminent speakers on. We'll be speaking on the major uh, uh, cancers like oral cancers and also uh, blood cancers. So I request all of you to please uh, join so that you can upgrade your knowledge regarding cancers. Uh, good evening, everyone. Video. Video share. Uh, sir, am, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Can please switch off your switch on your video. Yes, sir. Uh, just sharing my PPT, sir. PPT share, sir. पीपीटी ऑन कर रखा था बंद हो सो इन द मीन टाइम लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर रश्मि शुक्ला डॉक्टर रश्मि शुक्ला इज द सीनियर कंसल्टेंट रेडिएशन ऑंकोलॉजिस्ट एट मैक्स he had uh, after completing her mbbs in barampur medical college uh, did her dnb in radiotherapy at uh, mahavir cancer sasthan patna and since then she has been treating patients with her acumen in radiotherapy at max group of hospitals uh, she is a voracious speaker and uh, she attends many awareness uh, lectures and uh, has taken the uh, uh, leadership action in uh, educating people about prevention of cancer so today we'll be talking on the most uh, common of the uh, cancers of women the breast cancer and how can we detect or how can we prevent breast cancers in women so may i now request dr rashmi please switch on the uh, video if possible and the ppt i think your ppt is not shared uh, sir ppt is not shared sir can you give us the access to share my ppt sir or i should mail it sir you can mail it 
ओके सर टू यू सर हाँ हाँ आप अपने से पीछे कुछ मैं देख रही हूँ अभी क्या हो गया मीटिंग में हूँ अभी मैं क्या हो क्या पूछो डॉक्टर बैठे हुए एक बार उनको मेल कर दो ना मेरा पीपीटी मेल कर दो आपके मेल से Thank <laughs> you. 
ऑडियो कैन यू टेल मी इन विच मेल यू हैव सेंट सर बी के बहरा एट द रेट ऑफ एन टी पी सी डॉट को डॉट इन इट स्टिल नॉट रिसीव उटेंट ऐसे लिख के देखो दावा नहीं मिलती है ठीक Dr. Rashmi, you can switch on your video. You have been given permission to share yes, the slide. Actually, Anand, she should share the slides. Switch on your video, Dr. Rashmi. Yes, sir. We are trying, sir. We are trying. Already on. No, no. Here, on. Not doing. That's it. That's it. Before that, here, on. Do it. Pravin Chandel, where is he? आपका आवाज तो आ रहा है लेकिन ये वीडियो नहीं आ रहा है सर बस ये स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं बट वी आर नॉट स्टिल नॉट एक्सेसिबल फॉर दैट सो आपके पास सर अगर मेल आई हो ना तो अगर वहां शेयर कर दे स्टार्ट विद दैट यू कैन से द आपका वीडियो तो ऑन करिए तो वीडियो वीडियो तो ऑन करिए मैडम सर वीडियो वी आर ट्राइंग बट वी आर नॉट सर वीडियो वी आर ट्राइंग टू ओपन इट बट इट इज नॉट ओपनिंग वीडियो में क्या प्रॉब्लम है ऑन द कैमरा एंड एवरीथिंग बट वी आर स्टार्टिंग वी आर ट्राइंग टू स्विच ऑन बट द कैमरा इज नॉट गेटिंग ओपन सर वीडियो वी आर अनएबल टू एक्सेस ओके आनंद कैन यू हेल्प मी आउट
Ma'am, just beside Mike, we have got a share share option. Is it visible now, sir? My uh, slides? No, no. Ma'am, your voice your voice is clear, not clear. Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Okay, now my voice is clear. Am I clear now, sir? Your voice is clear. Okay. Yes, but sir. Up, sir, the mail ID पे वो mail जा नहीं रहा है. चली गई sir. Now the mail है. कि एक बार check करिए आप अपने. मैम आपकी नेटवर्क काफी स्लो है आपकी वीडियो भी ब्रेक होके आ रहा है आवाज भी ब्रेक होके आ रहा है आई थिंक यू डू नॉट हैव ए गुड नेटवर्क देयर हेलो मैम 
you can start dr rashmi slide sir okay sir okay sir ye okay, sir. Uh, so a uh, very good evening to all of you and i am sorry for all the delay and because of it even the whole hospital it is in is pe lage the but something i don't know what happens to it so let's start with it so uh, today is a world cancer day so i am dr rashmi shukla i am a senior consultant radiation oncologist at max patanj so today i am going to discuss about the breast cancer early detection and prevention so i will start with nari uh, to presentation mode mein rakh sakte hain slides in presentation mode uh, sir bas kar dete hain sir is it okay sir is it okay nahi nahi abhi tak hua nahi hai कभी कभी लेक्चर पे करने से भी वो चला जाता है तो लेट इट बी इन दैट मोड सर ओके ओके कंटिन्यू हां सो सर दिस इज विजिबल ना नारी तुम केवल श्रद्धा हो नहीं हेलो सर नहीं नहीं सर मे साइड सर मूवी नो मैम स्लाइड मूव नहीं कर रहा है अब आया ओके तो को स्टार्ट करना चाहती हूँ ये बहुत ही खूबसूरत सा पिक्चर है नारी तुम केवल श्रद्धा हो नारी तुम केवल श्रद्धा हो विश्वास रजत नग पग तल में पीयूष स्रोत सी बाह करो पीयूष स्रोत सी बाह करो जीवन के सुंदर दल में सो let's talk about the cancer as we know that cancer is an abnormal growth of cells in an uncontrolled way so it leads to a progressive disease so i want to say that four out of 10 cancer cases can be prevented by simply spreading the smoking good healthy diet physical activities a uh, good high protein diet and uh, avoid pollution and all so today i am going to talk only and only about the breast cancer so can you and me do something to prevent cancer yes so why we are discussing so much about the breast cancer so according to the globocon data 2020 the incidence of breast cancer in world as well as india it is the highest leading incidence of the camp breast cancer and the mortality due to breast cancer it is also the highest so we are talking this breast cancer as an awareness awareness screening and all because of its high incidence as well as high mortality rate so what are the symptoms of breast cancer as we all know that the symptom is a uh, lump in a any lump in a breast cancer but uh, main chahungi ki aaj ke jo hum talk kar rahe hai i want to just highlight on some important things that there are some myths also so any lump in a breast it is not always a cancer so this is a very important message i want to give you because it might be a fibroadenoma fibroadenosis so many other non malignant causes of lump in the breast yes but any lump in the breast it should be investigated and properly seen by gynecologist or cancer specialist or at least by a doctor so any lump in a breast or any lump in the axilla also sometimes the breast cancer present with there is no lump in the breast and only there is a lump in the axilla especially the men it occurs like that then any change in the both side of the breast sometimes the disease breast get pulled up so any skin changes like beauty orange redness or retraction of the nipple or the small size of the breast it should be properly investigated also there is dimpling on the skin or might be some only a beauty orange like a small small dot like appearance in the uh, skin third thing there might be any abnormal discharge from the nipple except the milk 
Uh, sometimes it is greenish in ductal ectasia, in malignancy, it is pus like or blood makes discharge. So, any discharge from the nipple, it should be properly investigated. As well as there are most of the time, there is a retro areolar lump, any lump sitting behind the nipple and it causing a discharge from the nipple. So, it should also be investigated. Sometimes, Paget's disease will be there. So, all the symptoms like this type of uh, any complaint in any lady should be properly investigated. So, I am going to discuss about the risk factors. So, some of the risk factors are modifiable and some are non-modifiable. So, we can go one by one. So, first is the age. As the age increases, the risk factor increases exponentially up to menopause. So, the data says that one out of eight breast cancer are found in increases. 55 years, two out of three invasive breast cancer are found in women. So the simple thing is that in our routine clinical practice, we found even what in my 13 years of career, I have seen 24 years the youngest breast cancer patient. So it occurs very uh, frequently, but yes, in our clinic, most of the ladies are above 45 or 50 years of age. Second risk factor. The second risk factor is a gender. So female itself is the biggest risk factor for a breast cancer. But I want to just highlight the thing that men should also are getting the breast cancer. In my clinic, what I have seen in the last 13 years that if we treat 15 to 20 breast cancer per month, we found two to three breast cancer in our practice per year. So, Purusho ko bhi breast cancer hota hai. This is the important message I want to give. Then there are some race and ethnicity. Like white women, they are slightly at more risk than African American, less than 45 years. Asian, Hispanic and Native American women have the lower risk. Next is the family history. So, this is a very important point that in a family, if anyone of our mother or Masi like that, if she is uh, suffering from or she had breast cancer, then there is an increased risk of breast cancer in the family. But it doesn't mean that if a mother is a, has a breast cancer, then 100% definitely the lady, the daughter will get the breast cancer. No. Yes, but one first degree relative, like mother, sister, daughter, or breast cancer, there is a 1.5 to three fold, there is an increased risk of breast cancer. But it depends on the number of relatives affected, exact relationship, age, and there are several risk models at that. So in this point, I want to just highlight key. There are some other genetic methods, like as we have seen the Angelina Jolie effect, for detecting the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene. There are so many NGS panels are now there. So with that, we can detect that what is the risk factor to having the getting the breast cancer in daughter or the relatives. Personal history. This is a very important point. I want to just give the message is that sometimes the lady who is having breast cancer treated eight years, nine years, 15 years, then they are thinking that, okay, I am okay. No, but it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes we are getting the recurrences even after 12 years or 15 years of treatment. So the point is here that even if at 15 years, if the duration of disease-free interval is smooth, and even if the disease recur, still, if we get it early detected, then the risk of cure will get very, very high. So a person, a woman with cancer in one breast, there is a three to four fold increase in breast cancer in the opposite breast, as well as 10 to 15% chances in contralateral breast. 
menstrual history there is a data but it's not a, always a thumb rule that early menarche and late menopause because as the estrogen exposure is high there is slightly higher risk of breast cancer parity as uh, now we are having a uh, different lifestyle the everyone is reading education after 30 years marriage and all so what we found is that nally paris women and first childbirth after 30 years they have a slightly higher breast cancer risk but it doesn't mean that a, a woman who has a first child at 35 or 37 years he must having the breast cancer the point here is that it has increased risk of recurrences only up to this and we also have the data some but it is not very strongly supporting that uh, breastfeeding might slightly reduces the risk of breast cancer sometimes they are saying that the dense breast they have more uh, risk for that oral contraceptives they are using if they have using for a long time more than 10 years like that they might be have a increased risk and also the hormone therapy after menopause if you are using for a long time it may increases the risk of breast cancer even with the use of but we see that as we increase the alcohol intake uh, there is exponential increase in the risk of breast cancer so this is a very beautiful picture i like that in the ancient time like in our village uh, these activities like chakla jata and all these uh, they get the figure of this so as we say even if not the breast cancer even endometrial cancer ovarian cancer pancreatic cancer so many other cancers are related with the obesity so as after menopause there is increased risk of estrogen so data says that if the body mass index is more than 31.5 there one there is an increased 2.4 risk of breast cancer so diet we say that our diet should be a colorful diet which includes all the micronutrients and all it is not only for the cancer prevention but for other thing also as well as the physical activity so as we know that the women's health initiative have said that even the three times uh, 30 to 40 minutes brisk walking three times a week or 1.25 to 2.5 hours per week it reduces the risk of breast cancer by 18% as well as american heart association says that it also reduces the all, all the cardiac events so to summarize if we say that there is an some modifiable as well as non modifiable risk factor this is a very important point i want to highlight it like what i said that if any family that any lady has a uh, breast cancer it doesn't mean that the family will also suffer from any cancer including the breast cancer so only 5 to 10% breast cancers they are hereditary and there are so many other genes they are related to that but braca1 and braca2 mutations that are the most common hereditary breast cancer causes and there are so many other germline mutations like p53 braca1 and braca2 these are the so with doing with this test uh, we are we are able to estimate the risk whether the daughter or the relative is having the higher risk so that we can go of the prevention like angelina jolie effect unki masi ko tha mother ko tha so many others so can do do a prophylactic mastectomy as well as bilateral oophorectomy 
so this is also a, this is done by a simple blood test but uh, this we first this uh, genes first we do on the patient if the patient is found to be a braca1 and braca2 mutation then we go ahead with the daughter cell all so the sequencing and the type of doing the blood test is that and it is a simple blood test with ngs and all. so uh, these are the risk factors then we are coming for the screening and preventions so uh, as we these are the risk factors also and these are the methods why we can prevent it yes but uh, most of the things that are more non modifiable so what are the screening tools we generally do screening for those diseases which have the very high incidence if it occurs very high mortality rate and if by screening we are getting to detect the breast cancer at early stage then the cure rate is very very high so if we are detecting the breast cancer at stage 3 and stage 4 then the cure rate will be only 20 to 30% but if we are detecting the breast cancer at the stage of 1 2 then the cure rate rises up to 90 to 80 to 90 percent. So before starting screening, I just want to highlight that why we will do screening because in Western world they are very strict in their screening protocol. They are getting the cancer of size of 0.2, 0.5, 0.7, 1.2 cm, and in our country. we are getting the tumor of size of 5 cm 10 cm or stage 4 the the tumor is metastasizes to the brain lung liver everywhere it is metastasized so with doing simple screening we can detect the breast cancer at early stage if we are detecting the early stage the cure rate is very very high so if we are detecting so in cancer we have three modality of treatment radiation therapy surgery and medical oncology like chemotherapy so these are the three modalities we are using sequence wise because as we are getting early breast cancer first we go ahead with surgery then chemo then radiation if it is locally advanced we are giving chemo first to shrink the size then we are doing surgery and then we are giving radiation and hormonal and whatever the treatment further is decided so these three modalities we have the treatment for that so coming back to the screening so we have three screening tools in our hand first is self breast examination second is clinical breast examination and third is mammography so these three are the very very important screening modality tools so i will go one by one first is self breast examination so self breast examination i found i feel that this is the most strongest tool every woman has because by doing self examination we can if we can detect uh, go to our physician or gynecologist or cancer specialist and investigate further so what i feel ki agar aap delhi ncr se bhi bahar niklo to they don't have the mammography and excess and all so a self examination tool is very very important tool uh, sir mere paas kitna samay hai uh, how much time i have you have half an hour more okay sir okay sir then i will just still have i want to elaborate breast self examination right please okay sir so breast self examination your I slides will, are not working write. actually dr rashmi your slides are stuck at nari tum keval shraddha ho sir uske baad slide nahi dikh rahi hai aapko nahi wahi pe atke hue hain अच्छा सर आपने बताया नहीं मुझे लगा स्लाइड दिख रही है मैं स्क्रॉल करती गई एक मिनट सर मैं जस्ट बुला रही स्लाइड्स मूव नहीं कर रही हैं स्लाइड्स मूव नहीं कर रही मैम एक बार एफ फाइव डाल के फिर स्लाइड्स मूव कर लीजिए मैम सर स्लाइड्स को शेयर हो रही है मतलब हमारी तरफ से है एफ फाइव मैम एफ फाइव एफ फाइव एक बार प्रेस करके फिर ये एक के बाद एक उसको नेक्स्ट 
Yes, sir. We, we pressed F5. My slides are visible. वहीं पे हो. अच्छा मैं तो सर इतना सारा. Ah, now it is coming. Now, ah, uh, yes, yes. अच्छा सर मुझे लगा इसलिए कि मैंने पूछा भी. अच्छा सर कोई बात नहीं. Start then. Sir, I will just not screen share it. Sometime uh, doing the screen, वो uh, screen share. What? ब्रेकिंग बट होल्डिंग यस कंटिन्यू छोड़ो 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 सर स्लाइड्स आर विजिबल सर यस हाँ ओके सर सो वी डिवाइड द ब्रेस्ट इन द फोर क्वाड्रेंट एज वेल एज एट द सेंट्रल क्वाड्रेंट सो what how we do the breast self examination like if you are trying to palpate or examine the left breast then we are using the right hand so we divide it four quadrant and we are using the three fingers of the pulp because if you try to uh, palpate whole of the breast then it will all the breast we can feel like a lump so with this three fingers we first start with the one quadrant we just rotate it and then press it then we move ahead rotate it and press it then move ahead rotate it and press it so while doing this we rotate it in a 360 degree angle then we can just palpate the nipple and areola area we will use this finger to palpate like this and to press like this whether there is any discharge is coming or not so with the same thing with the right breast if you are examine we are using the left hand as well as axilla also the opposite hand we are using so the most important thing in this is that we should always and always try to examine the under surface of breast i can give you a very exam good example we did a mammography camp in the indian oil and we found that a lady having the breast lump mammographically it is saying that it is the under surface at 6 o'clock position it is pyrats 4 but when we did the biopsy it becomes non cancerous so the lady said ki ma'am i am doing the continuously breast self examination so but the thing is that if we have a dense breast then the under surface <coughs> of the breast always missed so whole all the 360 degree quadrant as well as the central quadrant as well as the under surface of the breast must be examined properly so this is about the breast self examination then mammography so mammography is simple x ray machine so it's uh, just like whatever we are getting the image it's like an x ray so in the x ray we are using birax so it is our nomenclature with which we are seeing that is the any lesion or any lump in the breast whether it is benign or malignant so we will have the detect some specific features like calcification pattern of calcification the way it is spread we can determine that it is cancerous or non cancerous so we will get the mammography pictures like that so i want to just add on this that we have birads 1 2 3 4 and 5 so in birads 1 and 2 if we are getting it it is almost benign but if the birads 
फोर एंड फाइव इज आर गेटिंग इट मीन्स इट इज मोर लाइकली टू बी मेलिग्रेंट थ्री इज इन द मिड वे दैट वी नीड अ वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट फॉलो सो for remembrance biorets 4 and 5 that are the most most important matlab uh, malignant lesions if we are getting that but still there is a rate of false positivity so we prove it by doing the fnac as well as the biopsy just like an indian woman indian oil woman we, we found that it is a biorets 4 but doing the biopsy it becomes benign so there must be a policy but still mammography has a very very high incidence of detecting malignant lesion so it is an like an x ray machine so what there is a two plates and we just used a blue plates cranio cordal and cranio cordal and medio laterally we press with the both the plates and then we get an x ray and we found like that then clinical breast examination it is done by the physician doctors cancer specialist or trained gynecologist so uh, we do a clinical breast examination so these are about the three tools of screening so what are the treatment recommendation or guidelines for these screening methods so the guidelines are different different some use different but what the commonly used guidelines is breast self examination should be started monthly after 20 years of age so we say ki hum kaise karenge how we remember so sometimes we say to the patient that you remember your birth date or marriage anniversary like that so on every month while taking bath you can feel and palpate the lump palpate the breast if you are finding any abnormal lump in your breast then you report to the physician so breast self examination monthly after 20 years then clinical examination by a doctor the recommendation says that it is every 3 years 20 to 40 years of age every 3 years after 40 years every year so we can do that and mammography so mammography baseline mammography we recommend at the age of 40 to 45 years and after that annual mammography we recommend and up to 45 45 to 55 years and if 55 years if mammography is normal we can even do up to every two yearly the some recommendation says that up to the age of 75 years you can go ahead with mammography some recommendation says that we can do the mammography as long as the female is in a reasonably good health so these are the recommendations for the screening protocols in uh, suspected breast cancer so these are the screening method tools and uh, i am a radiation oncologist at max perpergan so i just want to highlight that at present we have the best machine that is true beam stx with 60 couch with 2.5 mlcs with all the added accessories and the equipments and in breast cancer specially for the left sided breast cancer we are doing a dibs technique that is deep inspiratory breath hold technique through which we can increases the distance between the chest wall and the heart so that we can reduce the dose to the heart as less as possible so in the coming 10 or 15 years we are going to reduce the cardiovascular events so these are the 10 brave celebs who have fought cancer and they win cancer and i just want to end my talk with aansu se bhige anchal par man ka sab kuch rakhna hoga aansu se bhige anchal par man ka sab kuch rakhna hoga tumko apni smriti rekha से यह संधि पत्र लिखना होगा यह संधि पत्र लिखना होगा सी सो वी ऑल ऑलवेज टेल ऑल द फीमेल्स दैट आप एक अच्छी माँ हो एक अच्छी पत्नी हो एक अच्छी बहन हो बट आप अपने लिए एक अच्छी हो सो प्लीज टेक टाइम टेक आउट टाइम फॉर योर सेल्फ बिकॉज अगर आप अच्छे हो देन योर फैमिली योर डिपेंडेंट योर रिलेटिव दे ऑल विल बी फाइन थैंक यू सो मच एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग दिस ऑपरचुनिटी टू शेयर माई एक्सपीरियंसेस हेयर थैंक यू सो मच thank you dr ashmi for lighting us on breast cancer
its uh, prevention, its importance, and also the treatment modalities. Uh, it is now open for questions. So all are requested. If they have any questions, they can uh, unmute themselves and ask the questions directly. And I am so sorry for all the because uh, puri Max ki IT team lagi hui thi kuch something network issues tha. I don't know how why uh, it is happening. So sorry for that, sir. Okay, it was our loss, not your loss. Uh, we could uh, miss some of the slides. You are uh, very good at making slides, but some uh, network issues at your end. Okay, sir. Hmm. Okay, sir. Okay. Any question I would like to answer? Any question is there? Uh, good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, madam, how frequently should uh, one undergo mammography after 40, 40 years of age? Sometimes okay. it is suggested yes, yes, annually. Yes, I can repeat that. Uh, two things I want to add in this. We are doing mammography at the age of 40 years because before that the breast is very dense. So if you are doing mammography before 40 years, the sensitivity and pickup rates of any malignant lesion in the breast, it is very difficult. But yes, even sometimes 36 years lady not having the dense breast and 47 years lady having the very dense breast. So I want to add on this. Sometimes we have to add sonomammography. So sometimes if the breast, we are, if any lady is coming for our department for mammography, we found that the breast is very dense. Then we add sonomammography, ultrasound as well as mammography to detect that. Second thing, we have to do a mammography that is a very good quality. Now we are doing a digital mammography. So before 40 years, if any lump is we are getting, we have to do an ultrasound. After 40 years, we say that mammography. So the recommendation for the general population is that between 40 to 45 years, Normally, the recommendation is 40 years, but in Indian scenario, we see that if you don't have to do it in 40 years, then at least in 40 to 45 years, there should be a baseline mammography in the baseline. The thing is that sometimes the lumps are so small and it is so deeply seated that even we cannot get by simply palpating it. So at the 40 years, we have to do a baseline mammography. After that, yearly mammography till 55 years we recommend but sometimes they say ki nahi theek hai ek saal mein nahi kara paaye to at least aap do saal mein to zarur kara lo third thing after 55 or 57 years jo hai wo do saal pe aap karate rahe to what i said the recommendation some guidelines say up to 55 years but some guidelines say ki the as long you can do as the women is in a physically and in a good health so i can give a very good example for this a lady thi wo 60 65 tak mammography karti thi unka regular routine checkup tha at 84 years we get a 2.4 cm lump at 6 o'clock position so she asked me कि मैं तो रेगुलर मैमोग्राफी करती थी कभी मुझे नहीं ऐसा कभी कुछ लंप पकड़ा नहीं गया बट ऐसा नहीं है इवन एट 60 और 62 और 65 इयर्स द ब्रेस्ट कैंसर स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग एंड वी कैन हैव दैट टू गेट दैट कैंसर एट द एज ऑफ 84 इयर्स सो दैट्स व्हाई द गाइडलाइन सेज कि 40 साल पे एक बेसलाइन मैमोग्राफी उसके बाद एनुअली आप कराते जाओ एट लीस्ट आपको 55 इयर्स आफ्टर दैट Two yearly you can also do and you can go ahead up to 75 or as long as the female is in a physically good health. I hope I answered your question ma'am. Namaste. Uh, yes madam. One more thing. Uh, where can this BRCA1 or BRCA2 genetic analysis be, can be done? Is uh, it so ma'am first we do this BRCA1 and BRCA2 ma'am. This is a simple blood test. Hota hai. This is a very simple blood test. So we do, uh, first we do the, these blood tests in the patient. Patient ka pehle hum blood test karenge. Ye sab jagah nahi available. It is not very frequently available to all lab. There are certain labs which are only and only doing this. So pehle hum usse uh, patient ka karenge. Agar usme ye gene paaya jayega, to unke bacho mein fir karte hai. And usme bhi ye simple blood test hota hai. So these are always and always recommended from the higher tertiary center. 
जनरल लैब में क्योंकि हर लैब की क्वालिटी अश्योरेंस ऑथेंटिसिटी उतनी अच्छी नहीं होती है सो यू बिकॉज दीज आर कॉस्टली टेस्ट ऑल्सो एंड तो यू हैव टू डू इन अ वेरी प्रॉपर एंड गुड सेटअप and if the patient was uh, not uh, done the the braca ji genetic analysis was not done in the patient then can their siblings be tested ma'am can cost ek issue hai agar theek hai patient mein nahi hua koi baat nahi agar aapko cost ka issue nahi hai to anyone can do that aap bachcho ko kara sakte ho wo koi issue nahi hai but normally hum pehle patient ka karte hain fir uske baad bachcho mein dekhte hain but aap agar aisa koi hard and fast nahi hai ki agar aapne ek ka nahi hua to dusre kaam kar nahi sakte hain karte hain but this this is the right way to go ahead ma'am is it available in delhi yes yes ma'am is it is it very highly available in delhi we are not sending to the outside like uh foreign it's doing we are doing in delhi so many labs are doing but the lab should be very very strict they have the qa very stringent protocol then we are doing that cost kya hai tsp cost madam i want to madam i want to know because my sister my own sister had ca breast at the age of 42 okay. and okay. uh, she she got cured she went under treat she took the treatment in tmh mumbai under dr uh, badwe but when we requested for a brca gene in a siblings she has two daughters they refused they said that mother ka nahi hua tab inka nahi ho sakta hai normally madam recommendation hum yahi kehte hain aap koi bahar se kara le to koi baat nahi बट हम रिकमेंड यही करते हैं कि पहले पेशेंट का करते हैं फिर उसके बाद करते हैं बट अगर कोई बाहर से करा ले तो हम उस पर कोई वो नहीं है कि बिल्कुल करा लिया तो बिल्कुल ये ब्लंडर हो गया या ऐसा है बट नॉर्मली पहले पेशेंट का होता है मैम तो दिल्ली में कहाँ पे होता है मैडम मैंने आई दिया मतलब या तो हमारे पास आना होगा या किसी भी आप कैंसर सेंटर में जाके वहां बोलेंगे तब वहां से होगा उसको देख के हम रिकमेंड करते हैं उसमें बहुत सारे फैक्टर्स होते हैं मैम ये एक्चुअली मैम ये कहना आसान है कि ब्रैका वन ब्रैका टू करा लो जब पॉजिटिव आ जाता है ना तो सबके हाथ कांपने लगते हैं बिकॉज इफ दे गेट नो कि नहीं नहीं हमारे में रिस्क ज्यादा है तो उतना एप्रीहेंशन होता है सो व्हाट वी डू कि अगर मेरा केवल सजेशन ये रहेगा कि अगर मदर को है और आपको अगर उनके बच्चों के लिए चाहिए तो दे शुड स्ट्रिक्टली डू द ब्रेस्ट सेल्फ एग्जामिनेशन क्लिनिकल ब्रेस्ट एग्जामिनेशन और अगर एज हो गई है तो मेमोग्राफी वो स्टार्ट कर दे और नहीं तो एटलीस्ट अल्ट्रासाउंड कराए बिकॉज यही दो तीन चीजें होती हैं इससे हम अर्ली डिटेक्ट करते हैं कहने को बहुत आसान होता है कि प्रोफाइलेक्टिकली बायोलैक्ट्रल मैस्टिकोमी करा दो बट पेशेंट के सामने बैठ के ये डिस्कस करना बहुत डिफिकल्ट होता है इट्स नॉट इजी सो वी वी नॉर्मली गो थ्रू द पाथ ऑफ स्क्रीनिंग लाइक जैसे हम एक साल पे करते हैं अल्ट्रासाउंड छह महीने पे कर देते हैं अगर हाई रिस्क अगर ब्रैका पॉजिटिव आता है इस तरह के पेशेंट्स को अगर हम मैस्टिकोमी नहीं करते हैं तो हम अपना रूटीन चेकअप वगैरह की फ्रीक्वेंसी बढ़ा देते हैं थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम मैम अगर कोई कैटेगरी टू में है जैसे कि विनाइन कहा जाता है व्हाट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी कि उसका कैटेगरी ज्यादा बढ़ सकता है थ्री फोर आ सकता है यस सर यस सर सो दिस इज अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन सर पहले तो जो मेमोग्राफी की जो बायोबैक्स वन एंड टू है सर और फोर एंड फाइव है तो जनरल रिमेम्बरेंस के लिए सर वन एंड टू नॉर्मली फाइब्रो एडिनोसिस फाइब्रो एडिनोमा में होता है बट सर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम मेमोग्राफी में अगर वन एंड टू आता भी है तो भी हम उनको कहते हैं कि आप नेक्स्ट ईयर एक बार अपना मेमोग्राफी या उसके साथ अल्ट्रासाउंड कंबाइन करके देखना है सेकेंड थिंग जो ये वन एंड टू है इनके जो रिस्क ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टू द हायर ग्रेड इज वेरी वेरी लेस लेस देन टेन परसेंट इवन वन की तो लेस देन फाइव परसेंट सो 
वॉट वी एज्यूम की जो हमें दिख रहा है क्योंकि हर चीज की तो गारंटी कोई नहीं ले सकता है बट वॉट वी एज्यूम की मेमोग्राफी में मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम We found it. It's one and two. Then we generally do one yearly. एक बार follow up करते हैं और one and two आने के बाद in my practice I have not seen की one and two आया और वो दो चार साल में फिर वो transform होके three four and five हुआ. Normally ऐसा होता नहीं है sir. I I hope I answered your question. Ten percent जो बोल रहे हैं कि possibility है still is very high it seems. सर स्टिल नाइन्टी परसेंट और टेन परसेंट में बहुत डिफरेंस होता है सो so, अगर हमें टेन परसेंट मिलता है वी ऑल्सो गो विद द क्लिनिकल ब्रेस्ट एग्जामिनेशन हम अपने से भी उसको देखते हैं और उसमें भी सर जो मैमोग्राफी में होता है ना एक माइक्रो कैल्सिफिकेशन और उसके कुछ स्पेसिफिक उसके पैरामीटर्स होते हैं इफ इट इज नॉट फिटिंग इन दैट नॉर्मली वी सेंड देम एंड हैव अ रेगुलर फॉलो अप ईयरली सर दिस इज अ प्रोटोकॉल बिकॉज हम हर चीज को 10% है तो उसके लिए पूरा इन्वेस्टिगेशन कर दे मैमोग्राफी कर दे यस बट इफ वी हैव एनी डाउट बिकॉज समटाइम्स इफ द ब्रेस्ट इज वेरी डेंस देन वी आर गेटिंग बायराइट्स वन एंड टू इन दैट केस इफ वी हैव बिकॉज सर हमारे यहाँ मैक्स पटवरगंज में इन द लास्ट टेन इयर्स वी हैव द रेडियोलॉजी का सेपरेट यूनिट है लाइक ब्रेन रेडियोलॉजी वन पर्सन इज लुकिंग ब्रेस्ट रेडियोलॉजी डॉक्टर ज्ञान इज ओनली लुकिंग सो इवन अगर कोई पेशेंट आता है और मैमोग्राफी में हमें थोड़ा सा भी डाउट होता है हम इमीडिएटली उसको अल्ट्रासाउंड से कंबाइन करते हैं उसमें भी अगर हमें डाउट होता है तो हम एम आर आई कराते हैं सो वॉट आई फाउंड इन माई प्रैक्टिस इज दैट की आवर रेडियोलॉजिस्ट आर वेरी वेरी स्ट्रेंजेंट इन दैट प्रोटोकॉल मैं इसका एक बहुत छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल आपको दूंगी सर विद्यापीठ के जो डायरेक्टर है उनकी मदर को एक लम्ब था 57 सेवन ईयर्स में अभी लास्ट ईयर की बात है सो so, उनका बरेली में ऑपरेशन हुआ तो किन्होंने लोकल में ही बस एक्सीजन करके छोड़ दिया फिर जब बायोप्सी गई तो एफ एन एसी बॉस फाइब्रो एडिनोमा तो दे थॉट कि ये सिंपल है लोकल में उन्होंने एक्साइज कर दिया एंड देन द हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी केम आउट टू बी एन इनवेजिव लोबुलर कैस कार्सिनोमा देन दे केम टू अस देन वी डेड अ मैमोग्राफी उसमें हमें डाउट हुआ हमने तुरंत हमने एमआरआई किया एमआरआई में वन सेंटीमीटर का रेसिडुअल था वी अगेन ऑपरेटेड इट मेक इट क्लियर एंड हिस्टोबायोप्सी इट केम आउट टू बी अ वन सेंटीमीटर रेसिडुअल ट्यूमर सो व्हाट आई मीन टू से सर कि मैमोग्राफी आप कहाँ से कराते हो कौन उसकी रिपोर्टिंग कर रहा है और अगर उनको डाउट है तो क्या हम एडेड इन्वेस्टिगेशन उसमें एड कर रहे हैं दिस मेक्स अ वेरी 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 लॉट ऑफ सेंस इससे ज्यादा तो कोई कुछ नहीं कर सकता बिकॉज हंड्रेड परसेंट क्लैरिटी और गारंटी किसी भी चीज के नहीं होती है इट इज अंपल एक्सरे सर बट स्टिल इफ वी हैव डाउट ऑन दैट एंड नाउ वी हैव द मैमोग्राफी की जो मशीन है वी आर यूजिंग द डिजिटल मैमोग्राफी जो बहुत अपडेटेड है पहले वाली मैमोग्राफी से सो दिस मस सर नहीं मैम मैं कहना चाहता हूँ कभी कभी कैटेगरी टू मिलता है और उसके साथ ये भी लिखा रहता है कि स्मॉल एक्जिलरी लिफ नोट से फोर मिलीमीटर और सिक्स मिलीमीटर इन साइज फाउंड अल्टीमेटली रिपोर्ट इज बिनाइन करके आता है तो इन योर इन योर ओपिनियन हाउ मच साइज ऑफ लिम्फ नोड विल बी मोर सिग्निफिकेंट सर द इफ एनी लिम्फ नोड वी आर गेटिंग ना सर तो इमीडिएटली जो मैमोग्राफी करता है ना वही हम अल्ट्रासाउंड करके डिटेक्ट कर लेते हैं कि लिम्फ नोड सस्पिशियस है कि नहीं है एंड फॉर योर क्वेश्चन हाउ टू डिटरमाइन द लिम्फ नोड इज मैलिग्नेंट और बेनाइन एनी लिम्फ नोड इफ इट इज मोर देन वन सेंटीमीटर एंड राउंडेड इन साइज एंड इट हैज लॉस्ट इज हाईलम इट इज मोर सस्पिशियस ऑफ मैलिग्नेंट लेकिन चार से छह मिलीमीटर का है इलांगेटेड है उसका हाइलम प्रिजर्व है देन वो मोस्टली बेनाइन होता है सर सो दीज आर द क्राइटेरिया ऑन इमेजिंग हाउ वी डिटरमाइन इट इज मैलिग्नेंट और बेनाइन सर थैंक्स मैडम थैंक्स मैम आई हैव ए पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन इज दैट ब्रेस्ट सेल्फ एग्जामिनेशन यस सर Are there clinical studies to uh, know the sensitivity of detection of breast cancer through breast self examination? And the second question is that, what is the size, minimum size, which can be detected, and the percentage of its detection by breast self examination? Scientific okay. study. Okay, sir. Uh, scientific study. If we talk about it, then this is objective variation, sir. 
द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन ब्रेस्ट सेल्फ एग्जामिनेशन इज दैट अगर कोई लंप आपका बहुत डीप सीटेड है अगर वो बहुत डीप सीटेड होगा चाहे वो थ्री सेंटीमीटर का भी होगा आप उसको डिटेक्ट नहीं कर पाएंगे अगर वो बिल्कुल रेट्रोपेक्टोरल एरिया में है तो सो so, इवन एक पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर का लंप होगा बट बिल्कुल सुपरफिशियल होगा निपल के जस्ट बगल में होगा वो आपको नहाते वक्त या सिंपल वॉश करते वक्त वो फील हो जाएगा तो कहने का मतलब ये है सर कि वो कहाँ पे है प्लस ऑलवेज एंड ऑलवेज इट्स नॉट अ डिक्टम कि जो ब्रेस्ट लंप होगा वो बिल्कुल हार्ड होगा समटाइम इट माइट बी फॉर्म समाइम इट माइट बी स्लिपरी समाइम इट इज नॉट सो बिग दैट इट इज अ फिक्स सो कहने का मतलब ये है सर कि वो पोजीशन कहाँ है साइज कहाँ है आप कितने अच्छे से एग्जामिन कर रहे हो बिकॉज हमने तो सिखा दिया कि ऐसे करके हमें तीन फिंगर से करना है और ये सारी चीजें करनी है जो आपकी सब जो है अंडर सरफेस ऑफ द ब्रेस्ट है उसको देखना है बट जो पर्सन कर रहा है वो कितने अच्छे से करता है उसपे सारा का सारा ये डिटेक्ट करता है तो साइंटिफिक स्टडी से इसकी अगर वो बिल्कुल एक्सेसिबल साइट पे है बिल्कुल दिख रहा है तो इट इज अंड्रेड परसेंट रेट ऑफ डिटेक्शन बट अगर वो एक एक्सपर्ट भी है इवन डॉक्टर भी अगर करते हैं लेकिन वो बिल्कुल पेक्टोरल्स के एकदम सटा हुआ है बिकॉज समटाइम्स वी आर गेटिंग अ लंप ऑफ थ्री टू फोर सेंटीमीटर जो पूरा पेक्टोरल फेशिया जो मेजर है उस पर पूरा जाके वहां पे है तो आप कितना भी पैलपेट कर लो आपको कोई लंप नहीं मिलेगा सो इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द स्किल ऑफ द पर्सन हु इज डूइंग हाउ एक्सपर्ट ही इज डूइंग दैट एग्जामिनेशन सेकेंड थिंग अगर वो करता है वो पोजिशन कहाँ पे है और कभी कभी सर तो मैंने देखा है कि सिंपल लेडी बिल्कुल अनएजुकेटेड और ये है उनको नहाते वक्त कही मैडम ये गांठ लग रही थी तीन महीने से बढ़ रही है कोई गांठ है अच्छा कुछ कुछ लोग कहते हैं अच्छा गांठ है ठीक है छोड़ देते हैं वेन इट इज ग्रोइंग वेरी रैपिडली विद इन टू मंथ एंड थ्री मंथ देन दे कम टू अस इवन एंड वेरी अ सिंपल लेडी अनएजुकेटेड लेडी तो इसका डिटेक्टर डिटेक्शन रेट सर वेरिएबल होगा पर्सन पे डिपेंड करेगा स्किल पे डिपेंड करेगा और पोजीशन पे डिपेंड करेगा और साइज पे डिपेंड करेगा सर मैम अनदर क्वेश्चन इज दैट यू ऑल एडवोकेट दैट द बेस्ट मेथड टू डिटेक्ट अर्ली डिटेक्शन इज सेल्फ ब्रेस्ट एग्जामिनेशन बट हाउ द पेशेंट हाउ द लेडी विल डिफरेंशिएट व्हेदर इट इज अ नॉर्मल ब्रेस्ट ग्लैंडुलर टिश्यू और अ अर्ली स्टेज ऑफ कैंसर सर uh, अगर जो अर्ली अर्ली जो ट्वेंटीज और थर्टीज का ब्रेस्ट होता है इट इज मोर डेंस मोर ग्लैंडुलर सो इसीलिए मैंने कहा कि अगर आप ब्रेस्ट को दोनों हाथ से दबा के ऐसे करके अगर आप फील करोगे तो पूरे ब्रेस्ट में ही कांट लगेगी तो नॉर्मली उसी लिए सर तीन हाथ के फिंगर के पल्प से हम फ्लैट सरफेस से डिटेक्ट करते हैं अगर लंप होता है तो वो फिंगर से स्लिप करता है या कहीं ना कहीं वो अन सरफेस को पकड़ लेता है लेकिन ये ऐसा नहीं है कि अगर किसी ने किया और हो सकता है वो बहुत डीप हो या उसका मेथड गलत हो तो स्लिप हो सकता है बट कुछ नहीं से कुछ करना थोड़ा बेहतर होता है ये मेरा मानना है सर ओके थैंक यू सर एक्चुअली वी आर वी आर हैविंग वी आर डूइंग द ब्रेस्ट सेल्फ एग्जामिनेशन हमारे पास डमीज होती हैं सो वी आर ऑल्सो ट्रेनिंग द पर्सन उनको दिखा के करके और उन डमीज को पैलपेट करके हम वैसे भी करते हैं बट सर कितना भी कर लो वो कितना समझता है और कितने अच्छे से करता है डिफरेंस रह ही जाता है सर बट स्टिल सर बहुत सारे लोग अगर सौ लोग अगर करते हैं उसमें से अगर दस लोग भी डिटेक्ट करते हैं तो इट्स अ ग्रेट अचीवमेंट एटलीस्ट दस का तो अर्ली डिटेक्ट हुआ right. और सर इसमें मैं एक चीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट ऐड करना चाहूंगी कि आधे से ज्यादा लोग आई जस्ट वांट टू शेयर सुप्रीम कोर्ट एडवोकेट हर मदर एट 74 फोर ईयर्स जिनको नाइन मंथ पहले लम था उन्होंने शर्म से बेटे को नहीं दिखाया जब वो एट सेंटीमीटर का हो गया तब वो लेके आए वेरी रिच पैसे की कोई कमी नहीं है हाईली एजुकेटेड फैमिली बट उनकी मदर ने उनको दिखाया ही नहीं सो so, बहुत सारे लंप हमारे इसलिए रह जाते हैं कि वो शर्म से और जो भी इनका इनिबिशन है उसके कारण नहीं दिखाते हैं तो बहुत सारे फैक्टर्स इसमें कोरिलेट होते हैं थैंक यू एनी मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस Okay if you do not have any more questions thank you so much Dr Rashmi and Dr Sangeeta are you there you can you have to say any few yes. words Good evening Good evening Good evening Thank you so much Dr Rashmi Dr Sangeeta Dr Rashmi Dr Sangeeta 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 Dr
Thanks, Dr. Rashmi, for sparing your valuable time and explaining in detail some about breast cancer. Theme of uh, Cancer Day uh, is the close the uh, close the care gap. The breast cancer is the most common cancer among the women. Early detection is crucial for successful treatment, and that's why it is important for women to be aware of signs and symptoms and to undergo regular self breast examination, clinical breast examination, and for uh, mammography. And it is important that we raise awareness about cancer and encourage women to be proactive about their health. Uh, I am thankful to all doctors as who attended this session, and I would urge them to spread awareness in their surroundings to educate the females as they uh, generally ignore. And uh, postpone their health issues to the background. And once again, thank you all for this wonderful session. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So with this, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Rasmi. Thank you, sir. Have a very nice evening, ma'am. Very nice evening and very nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.